Beginners always ask, what are the ideal water parameters I should shoot for in my tank? It's an important question for sure, but can be really dangerous if not answered with a few important caveats first. Caveat number one, don't make sudden changes. If your water parameters are out of whack, don't panic and make any sudden changes. And this is especially true if your tank looks totally fine and they're just a little bit off the recommended parameters. Once a problem is detected, slowly take the appropriate steps to bring it back into range, but only do so over the course of several days. Caveat number two, water changes do more than you think. Even a professional grade ICP test can't detect everything in your tank. Various trace elements and toxins are found in such small concentrations that they are undetectable and you may think that they're not a big deal. But over time, they can actually be incorporated into the bodies of fish and coral and eventually become toxic to them. A simple 10 to 15% weekly water change can help keep these invisible toxins at bay. Caveat number three, don't chase the numbers. I'm about to answer the initial water parameter question, but it's really important to understand that they're just recommendations. If you're being consistent with your weekly water changes and your nitrates and phosphates are 10 to 15% too high, as long as your tank looks healthy, then there's absolutely nothing to worry about. I'm not gonna give you the ideal water parameters for every single thing out there. For example, pH really isn't that useful for a beginner. If you're like me and live in an average sized home full of people and animals, it's gonna be nearly impossible to get your pH up into the recommended range. And honestly, it's not a big deal. Sure, your corals are going to grow a little bit slower, but that's a topic for a much more advanced level reefer. But here are the parameters I would test for with their recommended ranges. Calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium are important water parameters for invertebrate skeletal growth. Calcium and alkalinity are depleted the quickest and usually in a set ratio. Magnesium is depleted much more slowly and really only needs to be tested for every two to four months. If your calcium and or alkalinity fall out of range, it's crucial that you don't try to fix the problem immediately. Rather, make slow adjustments over the course of several days, maybe even a couple weeks. As long as you're testing weekly, you'll be able to see any trends and make any adjustments necessary before the parameters even fall outside of the recommended range. For calcium, shoot for a range between 400 and 425 parts per million. On the low end, from 380 to 400 parts per million, and the high end, 425 to 450 parts per million, start adjusting your dosing and or water change schedule to bring your calcium back into range. For alkalinity, aim for a stable range between 8 and 11 dKH. From 7 to 8 or from 11 to 12 dKH, start making adjustments to your water change schedule and or two-part dosing regimen to bring your alkalinity back within range. Don't even worry about magnesium until your tank is absolutely full of corals and then shoot for a range between 12 and 1400 parts per million. Nitrate and phosphate are much more than my two primary indicators of nuisance algae growth. They are also indicators of coral and anemone health as well as indicators of possible dinoflagellates and cyanobacteria outbreaks. It's much better for your nitrate and phosphate to be slightly too high rather than too low. Zero nitrates and phosphate are bad for your corals and can also lead to those two other ugly things I just mentioned. For nitrates, shoot for a range between 3 and 10 parts per million. On the lower end from 0 to 2 parts per million, slowly raise that number up, especially if the reading is at 0. From 10 to 20 parts per million, don't even worry about it as long as your tank looks good, but if that number starts creeping over 20 parts per million, then just make slow adjustments to bring it back to within range. You can lower your nitrates by increasing the level of filtration, feeding less and different kinds of fish food, and by increasing the frequency and amount of your weekly water change. For phosphates, aim for a range of 0.05 to 0.15 parts per million. 
from 0 0.00 to 0 0.03, slowly raise it up until it gets back within range. And when your phosphates start creeping above 0.15 parts per million, slowly bring it down by increasing your filtration, changing the frequency and amount of your water changes, or changing the type of food or how much food you feed. A super important thing to consider regarding phosphate levels, if you already have nuisance algae growing in your tank and your phosphate levels are reading 0, 0.00. That doesn't mean you have no phosphates in your tank. Rather, it means the nuisance algae is consuming all that phosphate, thus showing you a reading of zero parts per million. Ammonia nitrite should be at zero once the initial nitrogen cycle has been completed. If any big change occurs in your tank, this could temporarily spike your ammonia and nitrite levels. This could be the addition of new fish or an animal that died. Once the nitrogen cycle is complete and my tank is up and running, I really never ever test for ammonia and nitrite unless I see a problem with the system or I add a whole bunch of new animals. Click here for another informative video from Hello Reef, and until next time, be well and happy reefing everybody.